What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with my final walkthrough of the final version of iOS 9. So this is coming to the iPhone 4S and newer, the iPod Touch 5th generation and 6th generation, and the iPad 2 and newer. So basically all iPads except for the original. So basically anything running iOS 8 can now run iOS 9. So taking a look at one of the new features here on the lock screen, if we double tap the home button, we can now activate Apple Pay. So we don't have to wait for the terminal to wake it up, and then we can use our fingerprint to pay for something. Of course, we can't do that right now. In terms of what's new on the home screen here, one of the biggest visual changes obviously is a new wallpaper. So we have a whole new set of wallpapers which I'll cycle through at the end of the video. We also get a new font. This is San Francisco. Apple's applying this font across all of its devices from OS X El Capitan to the Watch OS 2. Now we have a few new features right on the home screen. So if we swipe all the way to the right, we get to this enhanced search, which includes Siri suggestions. So Siri suggestions is proactive, meaning that it will provide you information relative to your location and time of day. So right now it's showing me my favorite contacts up top, which live up here permanently. If I want to act upon them, I can just tap on them and I can quickly call them, message them, FaceTime them, or just take a look at that contact. And I can go to show more to see more contacts if I want. We also have our favorite apps located here. So apps that you frequently use will pop up right here. We have nearby locations we can search for gas, shopping, coffee, or lunch. And again, this is contextually based, based on time of day and location. So this will search for nearby locations for restaurant and dining. And down below that, we'll find all of our recent news stories. Now, search is still available from a swipe down gesture on the home screen, which has also been enhanced with Siri app suggestions. We also have a revised app launcher. So we now have all of our recently accessed apps right here, and we can swipe up to delete them or use multiple fingers to swipe up to delete multiple apps here. Handoff has also been integrated into the app launcher. So you can see I have quick access to Handoff from my Mac Pro right here. So right now I'm looking at a, a Safari tab on my Mac Pro right in front of me. So I can swipe up to quickly look at it, or I can just swipe up to access it directly. The notification center has also received some updates. So under notifications, our notifications are now ordered chronologically by default. If you remember, they used to be ordered by app, which personally I found a nuisance. I'm really glad to see this here. And if we want to clear out the entire day of notifications, you can hit that X in the upper right. Under the Today tab, we'll find some new widgets here. So, of course, we have the standard array of weather widgets, date and time, and some widgets I've already installed from third-party apps. But if I go to Edit here, you'll find I have two new ones, Batteries as well as Find Friends. So with the battery widget, I can see the current state of my watch as well as my phone. So this is really nice for accessories. You can imagine this being useful on the new iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. We also have Find Friends, which is now a pre-installed app. So I can see all my favorite contacts and their current location. Now you can change this back if you want. We have to go to settings and we'll find a new settings panel for notifications. So we're going to go to notifications and you can go ahead and select group by app. So now every notification is grouped by individual apps like we had with iOS 8. Siri has also been updated with a new animation and they removed the tone. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills, Michigan? It should be nice tomorrow. Up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. So no more feedback in terms of those tones, but we do get a vibration, which is new. Siri search has also been enhanced here. Show me photos I took in Detroit last year. Speaking of Siri, they have made some important new changes to it. So we can go to Settings, General, and under Siri. In order to activate Hey Siri to wake it up, we'll actually have to turn it on and train it to our voice. So let's go and set it up. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. So we're all set to go, so the iPhone should only recognize our voice when we say, Hey Siri. And in case you're wondering, only the iPhone 6S or newer is capable of receiving the Hey Siri command when the device is not plugged in. Now, one of my favorite new features is called Back to App. So, for example, if you receive a notification that prompts you to uh, open up another app here. So, for example, if I go to Instagram, I'm going to leave the previous app and jump right to Instagram. But if I want to get back to the app previously, I had to go home or go to the app launcher and find it again. This time, I get this little shortcut in the upper left corner, which allows me to jump right back to it, which is very handy. And I really like this because you know exactly what you're navigating back to. There's no mystery to it. So, again, back to Google. Under settings, we get a new control panel for battery. So under battery, we'll have low power mode. That's a new feature here. As you can see, the battery status icon is now yellow, indicating that it's turned on. So this will do a number of things, including dial back, CPU performance, the animations, as well as background downloading and fetching. But this will also use the proximity sensor on the phone to prevent the screen from waking up if the phone is in your pocket or face down. 
We also have our battery percentage icon, which we can turn on and off from the screen. And then we have more detailed information in terms of battery usage per app. So if I tap on them, you can see it expands out to give us some more information. So you can see how much time each app has been using on screen and how much time they've been using in the background. The keyboard has also received some welcome updates here, so we can now tell what case we're in, in addition to some updated buttons, which look a little cleaner. The voice dictation interface has also been updated. This is a test of voice dictation period. The settings panel also picks up search for the first time with iOS 9, so instead of thumbing through the entire list, you can now just search for what you want directly. Uh, so for example, I started searching for CarPlay, finds it right away without filling out the entire search, and here I am, right into the CarPlay settings panel. Now it's also important to note that with iOS 9, wireless CarPlay has also been restored. So if your car supports it, you have your settings panel right here. We also finally have the option to change our video resolution under settings. So we just have to go to photos and camera, and we now have two options here. So we have record video at 720 at 30, 1080 at 30 or 1080 at 60 frames per second. We also have our slow motion options, at least in the case of the iPhone 6 Plus here. So we have 120 or 240. Apple has also added some new pre-installed apps, like I mentioned here, which includes Find Friends and Find iPhones. Those used to be optional apps and you can no longer uninstall them. The podcast app has also been updated here with a new layout as well as a new icon. So we now have unplayed items in addition to the standard setup for my podcast featured top charts and more. We also have a new interface here for playing back podcasts, which is much more consistent with the Apple Music app. Passbook has been replaced with a new wallet app, so this integrates both your credit cards, your reward cards, loyalty cards, and more. iCloud Drive is also a new app we're prompted to install when we set up iOS 9 for the first time. So this gives me direct access to my files directly on my iCloud account, which I use quite a bit. So for example, all the audio I record for my videos is available through iCloud Drive through QuickTime. We also get a news app. So this is new with iOS 9, replaces newsstand. And if you have subscriptions in your newsstand, they will basically be pulled out and isolated as separate apps for those subscription services. So for example, I had a bunch of car subscription services, they turned into separate apps and were given their own folder. So if you like that service, it's gonna change a bit when you download iOS 9. But the news app is somewhat similar to Flipboard. So you can see For You, which basically aggregates all my news stories, everything I've selected, and I can quickly jump on them to view the whole story so I can read through it. I can like this to indicate that I like these type of stories or not. I can also share it if I want with my contacts or I can bookmark it. Now for you basically aggregates everything into chronological order, but if you want to isolate to specific categories or specific sources, you can go right to favorites. So for example, if I want to see all the iPhone news, it separates it for me right here. Or if I go to mobile computers, same story, loads all the stories for me. But if I want to modify these, I can go to explore. So I can unselect things I don't want from feature channels up top, or I can change the topics here. I can also just search for a category here. So if I want Android, just type in Android, I have Android Central, which is already selected here, and I can select Android Wear if I want to add that as well as a separate topic and click Done. I can also see my saved articles here, so if I want to quickly jump to them, I can go right here to find them. The Notes app has also been completely redesigned and is closer to a full editor now. So we have everything arranged by our available account as well as recently deleted notes. If you want to check them out, they're right here. So we can go ahead and select one of our folders or we can create new ones here. So if you want a new folder for specific types of notes, you can set that up. So getting back to one of our folders, we can go ahead and start writing a new note. So for the most part, it looks pretty familiar for the Notes app, but it doesn't really change until you open up some of your editing tools here. So so one of the things we can do here is create a checklist. So all I have to do is go to a specific line of text and hit this little icon down here. And just like with the Reminders app, you can go ahead and select it to indicate you're done with that specific item. We also get several formatting options here. So we have title, heading, body, bullet list, dash list, and number list. We can also insert photos either from our library or take new ones. So if I go to my library here, if I want to insert a screen grab I took earlier here, go ahead and select it, click choose, and it drops into our notes. We can also insert a sketch here and we have lots of tools to work with. So we have this pen tip here. We can select our marker and we can also select a pencil. Uh, we can also change our color here. We have lots of colors to pick from. Uh, so if you want to mark it up in a different color or change the pen tip here, let's go and select a different pen tip. There you go. We also have a ruler which works pretty neat here. So I can reposition it to uh, zero degrees, 45 degrees, and I can just draw on the edge of it. 
and I can go ahead and erase things if I want or click done to insert it into my notes. The Mail app also receives a very welcome update here. So we now have several options here for Mark All, Move All, or Trash All. So I can delete everything within this specific inbox. Now I find this does not work across all my inboxes. So if I go up to Edit here, you can see I just have Mark All. Also, when we're composing a email here, I can go ahead and tap and hold on the body of a text to add an attachment. And now I also have the option to use iCloud as the location for selecting that attachment, or I can go back to locations and select something else. So that includes Dropbox or Google Drive if I wanna go ahead and turn those on. Safari has also been tweaked here, so one of the options is Request Desktop Site, which is now available from this action icon. So we can swipe here to Request Desktop Site instead of the mobile site. Apple Maps has also been updated with transit information. So if we bring up transit information, we can see our individual stops here and we can tap on them to see the entire schedule. So in this case, we can see all the nearby subway stops and then we can swipe left to see the interval for those stops. The Photos app has also been updated with a new multi-select function. So we can go ahead and select and drag our finger across the screen to select multiple images instead of selecting them one by one. We also get a new scrubber here that allows us to quickly scrub through our images. Next up, let's move on to what's new with the iPad. And one of the biggest visual changes right away you can see is the foldering. So we now have four by four instead of just three by three, which is very welcome, especially with this much screen real estate. We also have a different drop down notification shade, which puts all of our widgets and notifications on the right side in addition to some of our today information on the left side. Now, one of the most important new features with iOS 9 is side-by-side -side windowing. So we have several ways of using this. So right now I'm looking at the Photos app, but if I want to swipe in from the right edge, I can peek at another app. So right now I have Twitter here, so I can browse through Twitter and I can select a different app if I want. So for example, if I want to check out my email, I can go ahead and check out my email, browse through my inbox and that sort of thing and it all scales perfectly fine. And then I can swipe to dismiss it, bring it forward again or tap here to dismiss it. So if I bring it forward here, you'll see this little grab handle. That indicates that both these windows can be opened side by side and resized. So I can go ahead and grab it and now they're resizing. So that means I can interact with both windows side by side, keep, him, keep them up at the same time without dismissing one side over the other. Now if I want to maximize this window, just swipe all the way to the right and it goes away. So again, swipe in, select the app you want. Go ahead and select photos in this case, browse it, expand it out if you want side by side viewing, tuck it in or slide it all the way to dismiss it. Now it's important to keep in mind that not all apps are compatible with this. So for example, I have the Nest app here. If I swipe in from the right edge, I no longer have that grab bar, but I can still peek at this app or select a different app to look at, but that means I can't open them side by side. But of course, apps can be updated with iOS 9 later to support the scaling option. Now the great thing with Apple's implementation here is that if you leave the side-by-side -side viewer, if you go back to one of the apps that was in the side-by-side -side view, they come back together. The video app has also been updated with a picture-in-picture -picture viewer. So I'm watching the movie here. If I tap on it, I can invoke this picture-in-picture -picture viewer. So this minimizes uh, the video into this little thumbnail, which I can resize and reposition. I can press the home button. It repositions depending on the context on the screen. And I can tuck it into the side here to sort of hide it out of the way while listening to the movie in the background. So that means I can do other things here. So I can bring up my email. I can swipe in again to access another app. So now I basically have three apps open at the same time. And if I want to jump back full screen, just tap on it, it goes to full screen mode. So the keyboard has some additional contextually related tools on the left and right side. So this changes depending on what app you're using. So for example, in the Note app, I have my controls for uh, markup language, as well as my uh, bullet points and undo, redo, or paste. We also have our art app here. So if we want to add some hand-drawn art, you can. And again, let's tap the screen to re-invoke the keyboard. Of course, we can still split it side by side, retaining those tools. And then we have this new mousing option here. So if we tap two fingers to the keyboard, we can mouse up and down to select text. Now, as far as everything else on the iPad, it's the same as the iPhone. Again, drop down notification shade with all of our chronologically ordered notifications and widgets. You can also swipe in to get to your enhanced search here, which breaks everything down with a little more real estate to work with, which is very nice. Of course, our settings panel has also been enhanced with search. So again, you can just quickly find whatever you need from the settings panel. Email app again has all your selecting tools, which I'm a big fan of here. So again, I can trash everything in here if I want. We also have the news app specifically for the iPad, which is formatted for the display on the iPad, which gives you a lot more screen real estate and definitely looks really nice here. And once again, we have these new permanent apps, including Find iPhone and Find Friends. 
Now in the case of the iPad, because we don't have a vibration motor in here for haptic feedback, it still tones when we invoke it. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? It should be nice tomorrow. Up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. Also on the iPad, if you go to Siri, we do have Allow Hey Siri, and you do program it to your voice. But once again, in the case of the iPad Air, you do have to be connected in order to invoke it. Getting back to our recent app launcher, again, same interface here, just spread out for the size of the iPad, and we do have our handoff feature just below that. Now, in case you're wondering, the slide over feature also works in portrait orientation. All right, guys, so as promised, toward the end of this video, I would show you the new wallpapers, which look really sharp here. Again, they're all new, replacing all the previous wallpapers. And I think they really look nice. Uh, now, in terms of my favorite features, they're pretty basic, really. My favorite really is back to app, uh, so it's kind of like a back button, but it tells you what you're going back to. The other small detail here is the fact that we now have chronological notifications uh, in the notification center, so we no longer need to break things down by app. I found that completely useless and frustrating, so I'm glad to see that has finally been dropped in favor of this chronological view. All right, guys, so what is your favorite new feature of iOS 9? I'm sure it's a little bigger than the one I just stated, uh, but please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.